Everyone has a good story to tell, and you know it is a good story when the person leans in and says, see what had happened was, and then tells the story. This podcast provides those opportunities to tell those types of stories in education. The stories will be from the good, the bad, and everything in between. We wanted to do this podcast to showcase stories in education and to give flowers to educators who deserve recognition for their excellence. Our guests will feature parents, students, teachers, administrators, and just about anyone who is involved in education. These stories will inspire you, challenge you, and help you to reflect on your practice of education, whether it be from the inside of the classroom or outside. If you have a good story to tell, we'd love to hear it. Email us at contact at andredowdy.org. We'd love to have you or your story on a future episode. See What Had Happened starts now. Welcome to See What Had Happened, where we hear stories in education from the good, the bad, and everything in between. We are your co-hosts, Danielle and Andre Dowdy. If this is your first time joining us on this podcast, welcome. Hey, hey, hey. And if you are friends and family of the show, hey, welcome back. We appreciate you. We are on all podcasting platforms, so wherever you go, be sure to click like and subscribe. Mm -hmm. And if you want to watch this experience, uh, we're on YouTube where you can just see the exact same thing. You'll just see our expressions and sometimes our outtakes as well. And there are a lot of them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Today's guest is this guy. Mm -hmm. Tell the people what you want them to know today. What is our show topic for today? Yeah, so today we'll just share another story. Uh, This story is dear to both of our hearts because this was the very first time that we experienced it. And that was the year that I took maternity leave. You can't take maternity leave, sir. That's what I thought. It's called paternity leave. Maternal is for women. Paternal is for gods. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so we'll share about that. Here's the setup. This is year three of me as a teacher. First two years, I was at Eisenhower Elementary. Uh, Third year, got an opportunity to teach at the KIPP Network. So this was KIPP Reach College Preparatory in Oklahoma City. Uh, during this exact same time, our really good friends, uh, Warren and Keisha Pete just had their baby. And so, uh, their baby is growing up big and tall. And, and so here we are, it is our turn. We are at a new school and trying to get to know the family and get to know the community, get to know the parents, the students, all of those good things. And, uh, Danielle was pregnant. (laughs) I was with child. You sure was. <laughs> um, it was a, a strange year. Strange in the fact that this is all still that set up. Uh, Kip Reach acted as a charter school, even though they were an independent public school. And so the, uh, the hours were longer to teach. Uh, there was more prep. Summer school was not voluntary. It was mandatory. It gave you a chance to get to know the students beforehand. And so that first day of school really felt more like the first month of school. Mm -hmm. So you had like a really good head start. And so here I am leaving Eisenhower Elementary, leaving with all of my stuff. And um, I remember Danielle having, she's probably what, your second trimester around that time? Because it was the summertime. And that's when I got interviewed. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So summertime, I'm getting interviewed to have a job. Now, I'm a black man in education. And so every interview has gone great because I am a black man in elementary education. So I go to Kip Reach College Prep and uh, meet Mr. Tracy McDaniel. And Mr. McDaniel says, hi, Dowdy, how are you doing? You know, he knows my mom because everybody in Oklahoma knows my mom. Uh. She's a great principal. Uh, And so here he's talking to me and we're just having a conversation. And he's like, yeah, that's what I like for you to do. I like for you to interview. And my first thought was, I thought that you needed teachers. (laughs) So if you need teachers, you really need to interview me? Mm, Arrogant much? Just a little. (laughs) 
Because once again, I'm a black man in education who specializes in elementary. So he's like, yeah, we, we're going to interview a lot of people. We're only going to add two to three more teachers for this year. So their first year, they only had two teachers. And so now they're only going to add two or three more. So, you know, it's a total of four or five at the most. I ain't no big deal. Let me go. Um, when would you like to set up the interview? You know, I can, uh, we can schedule a time, go home, you know, Langston University, put on your Sunday best, put on your best, you know, you bring your portfolio, bring samples and work. And he's like, right now. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I just came up to the school to see the school. You're talking about doing an interview right now. I'm still in basketball shorts and a t-shirt. You mm. want to do an interview right now? Hey, let's pause for a lesson. Uh-huh. You stay ready so you don't have to get ready. You stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So even though you were going to just see what this school looked like during the summertime, right? Yeah. Mm, you do not have the forethought. Maybe it's because you were young to go in preparation for an interview. Yes, and I did not know that their summer school was that way. I thought the teachers were just meeting up at the school because they were adding. So they were moving things, you know, from one classroom to another. Mm. So I'm just driving through. I'm like, here, let me go ahead and stop by. And see what this school looks like. So, you know, you had <laughs> drive through and you drive by and you're kind of looking on the outside. I'm like, oh, there's cars here. Let me pull up. So I pulled up and they were like, hey, Dowdy. Like, hey, how you doing? You know, talking to Mr. Pete and whatnot. And then talking to Mr. McDaniel. And he's like, yeah, let's interview. And I'm like, okay. Hmm. So I remember sitting down uh, with about two or three different people. And we're all there. And we're just talking, just as casual, just like this. You know, what are some things? Where are you from? Langston, tell me more about it. And Where are you at? Yeah, just having a conversation just like this. And they were like, great, all right. What we'd like for you to do now is we, wanna, we want you to do a sample teaching lesson. Hmm. And I was like... Your basketball <laughs> shorts. I was like, no problem. Oh, uh, my. Once again, I'm thinking... Two or three weeks when summer school opened. Mm -hmm. And they said, no, tomorrow. Oh, okay. I thought, well, yeah. at least you got to go. I was like, a sample change. lesson okay. tomorrow? Like They're like, yeah, you get the, uh, what we want you to do, we want you to teach a lesson to the entire school. <laughs> all of the, at the time, fifth graders who were now sixth graders and all of the incoming. Um, so we want you to teach a lesson to this entire school. Okay, my biggest class at that time was maybe 22, 23. All right, I got the energy. In my head, what lesson do you want me to teach? Well, you're going to be an ELA teacher. We'd love for you to uh, discuss and just teach an ELA lesson. Well, I got that in my bag because, you know, I was teaching the Shirley method mm. in different ways, how to break down the parts of speech and things like that. So great, went home that night. Um, they asked me, did I need to pull out any papers for the students to do? Nah, I can do it all on this chalkboard. Mm. So the next day I show up um, and there's a hundred kids in that room. <laughs> and they are paying attention like I have never seen students pay attention. Now, I don't know if the, they were there to say, is this going to be a good teacher? Or if they were there actually learning. Hmm. So I couldn't tell, nor was I about to try to figure that out. All right, here we go. So we broke out um, a world-famous noun chant, and I taught them how to do the noun chant and explained to them, you know, the different types of nouns and why hey. nouns are important. And Dulgis. Do you remember the chant? Uh, yes. Um, let's do a noun chant. Everybody would say, okay. And then we would do it cheesy first. This little noun floating around. Name's a person, place, a thing with a knick-knack paddywhack. These are English rules. Isn't language fun and cool? And then everybody, and everybody's like, ah, oh, you know, that's whack. That's cheesy. Ah, what? <laughs> uh. um, and then I was like, yeah, you got to sell it being cheesy first. Because when we bring in the hip hop and the beat, letting the beat drops, it makes it better. And they were like, huh? So I showed them, you know, the, the uh, 
the sixth graders would be like, uh oh. And then the fifth graders say, well, it's the noun we know. And they have to pop the collar. Uh oh, it's the noun we know. A noun names a person, a noun names a place, a noun names a person, place, and thing. And sometimes an idea. And then you have the body roll. And sometimes <laughs> an idea. And so, I mean, instantly, as soon as we started to put the hip hop with it, with the beat and the drum, I had already known that I, I, I won. I had those students eating out of the palm of my hand. Um, and then afterwards, we have to debrief. And the debrief took longer than the lesson. Hmm. What other things could you have done? De define some differentiation models that you... What, how would you... And I was like, this is the longest interview I've ever seen in my life. But it prepared you for... And it was great. The rest of your life. Because afterwards, we ate. Afterwards, the food oh, came in. Oh, my gosh. And so that's kind of when I knew, like, oh, I think I got this job. What kind of food was it? It was barbecue. I was just playing. <laughs> there was a barbecue spot somewhere oh, nearby. I was just playing. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are. I'm a part of Kip Reach College Prep now. Wait a minute. Uh -huh. Let's go back. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me you knew you got the job based on food? On food. They didn't say, welcome, Mr. Dowdy, or you got the job, anything? It was just you over some food? I figured it was over food because you're just not going to give everybody food. But no. Everybody's just not getting food after an interview. I got to sit with the, it wasn't, it wasn't a very big you staff at all. sit at the adult table. And I got to sit with them and we. But they, they never said you got the job? I'm sure McDaniel and Miss Smith oh. said that I got the job. Oh. I'm sure of it. Okay. Uh, Pete was like, welcome aboard. I'm sure there was, there was some... You don't recall that, but I don't you recall, recall the food. Okay. Yep. And then I recall telling um, McDaniel, said, hey, here's the only thing, man. I got a wife. Um, she's pregnant. And so that's when you came up to visit during summer or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, and I was like, she's going to be doing November. And they were like, okay, we'll play it by ear. Everything will go great. I'm like, no big deal. Now, once again, young, dumb. Young and dumb. I had never missed a day of school in all of my years of teaching. That perfect attendance was there. <laughs> and then just, I mean, you know, we teachers have that myth of I don't want to miss a day because I don't want to create a subfolder or I don't want to split up the kids and then the teachers have more work. So I'll just show up. Mm -hmm. So it was that exact same thing. Mm -hmm. I remember it was uh, the end of October. Our child was coming in November. End of October. And I've made all the sub plans. I've made six and seven weeks. And I remember Mr. McDaniel even asking, um, Daddy, are you going to take leave? And I was like, no. <laughs> no, I'm not taking leave. Young and dumb. Young and dumb. No, I'm not taking leave. <laughs> The baby's going to come, let's say, on that third. I'll be back on that fourth. Oh, my gosh. And he was like, Dowdy. <laughs> I said, yeah, who else is going to teach these chants? You know, I'm, 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 yeah. And he's like, Dowdy, no. And I was like, but we teachers. There's only four of us as teachers. We, I don't want to do that. And he's like, Dowdy. And he said, here, shut the door. So he shuts the door, and we talk inside of his office. And he says, Dowdy, man to man. This is not principal to teacher. This is just husband to husband. You got to be there for your wife. Shout out to you, Mr. Tracy McDaniel. Uh -huh. He literally said but that. But given a whole word. A whole word. You got to be there for your wife. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, she'll never forgive you if you're not there. Facts. And then you will be in the doghouse for forever. Facts. And he's like, man, she's just got to heal. And and I was like, well, she's got a mom. And like, her mom's there. And oh he's like, gosh. daddy, no. I can't no. believe I'm hearing this right now. No, seriously. I just, <sighs> young, dumb. Mm. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just do it for the rest of the week. And then I'll come back next week. He said, no, daddy, you get six weeks. So for these six weeks, you'll get off. He said, sign this paperwork. And he, like, forced me to sign it, which was so dope. Because once again, we're young at this time. Very young family. Um, fresh out of college almost, like not even mid-20s. We're still very young uh, as a family. And so I signed the papers, and he said, don't call, 
he said, where's your cell phone? Because at the time we had like these big old cell phones uh, that the school purchased for us. He said, turn off the cell phone. Keep it charged, but turn it off. Don't do no work. Don't. He said, just be there with your family. Mm. So November 3rd comes, baby comes on out. November 4th comes. And in my head, oh, I'm still going back on the 6th. And um, <sighs> I remember, <laughs> I remember. I'm getting, I'm getting a little upset. Don't be upset, Hear the story. <laughs> I just remember calling mm, mm, mm. just to check on him like, hey, how's mm, it? Mm, and mm. Pete was like, Daddy, we good. See you later. Like everything was cut short. Good. They all said very like one sentence types of things. Even talking to Mr. McDaniel, like, do you need more lesson plans? He's like, nope, we're good. So, but I thought I was needed. He's like, you are. At home. At home. That's what he said. Hmm. And so from that point on, um, I really took that to heart. And so that second day, third day, I'm with baby. Danielle is healing. And um, from that, that was a really cool shift for me. Um, because there's so many times we, as, as humans, we think work, 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 got to be at work, 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 because the work holds value to who you are. Come oh, on, that's yeah. Andre, the teacher. Cause I got to do work. Um, and then I also just believe there's some historical context to that as well, mm. um, where you don't feel like you're achieving unless you are doing. And if you aren't doing it feels like you're not worthy of whatever the title. Hmm. So, hmm. yeah, stayed home with you. Uh, our baby was in a, uh, a tanning. Now my baby is born healthy and strong. <laughs> I always have a song. Man. You do. <laughs> uh, and the thing I remember most about first week with baby was him peeing in that uh, tanning bed. Why it's not? It wasn't a tanning bed. So. And then you can smell that fried. No, pee. no, no. Let's not call it a tanning. <laughs> what bed. was it? We're gonna call that an incubator. An incubator. Yes. Um, our son had jaundice, and so they didn't want mommy or son to go home. And then they switched to say, "Son can't go home." And then we were like, "Is there anything that we can do? We don't want to leave him." <laughs> and it was, it's a big deal, but it's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. um, and they were like, well, you could purchase this uh, jaundice incubator tanning bed. And we were like, oh my gosh. how much is it? And they gave us like some big old number. And we no, start. No, it was, it, was, um, it was covered through insurance. That's what I'm saying. They gave us this big old number and we was like, what? And it was like, nah. And at the last minute, they were like, no, it's covered insurance. You can Baby can go home. And so we are all in the living room with baby. And uh, everybody sleep but me. And the entire time I'm like, school, school, school. Mm -hmm. If I could do that all over again now, um, I would encourage every parent, soon to be parent, take every bit of those six weeks. I did not take all six weeks. I should have taken all six weeks, mm -hmm. but I did not. Hmm. I think we maybe did a week and a half. Oh, that was we. Yeah. That was your decision. No, because I remember asking you, like, are you okay? And you was like, yeah, I'm fine. Go back to work. No. Yeah, I do remember no. that. No. Okay. <laughs> I remember asking, and, and then well, you was memory, like, yes, I your am Your memory okay. probably... Go serves you that way because your mind was on school. <laughs> could be. So now you're you hearing probably, what you want to hear. You could have just gave me mercy because you saw that my mind was on school. Mm. I know for sure I did not go all six weeks. Mm -hmm. I 100% know that for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but if I were to do it all over again, absolutely. Take all six of those weeks and it should be more. But that's a political thing. We're not going to get into that. But take all six weeks. Um, and what I didn't realize until after giving birth. Um, Who gave birth? You did. Oh, okay. That's what Just I'm saying. After, after that, <laughs> like, you really do need to recover. 
Yes. And you really do need to heal. Yes. And so shout out to every person out there in the world who perhaps didn't have that support or didn't have that community mm-hmm. and, and he, she, or they had to do it by themselves. Um, man, shout out to you. Um, Cause yeah, that, that was an experience. Oh, and then the cool thing was once when Danielle uh, was healed and once when baby no longer needed the incubator and, once when everything was all good, life kept happening. And so that was one of the other lessons that I learned from it. Mm. Was life is going to go go on with or without you. Right. You think that you are super important to this cause, to that organization, to this job, huh. to that church, to that mission, mm-hmm. that vision. Even if you are the CEO, life is still going to life. And you are disposable. Yeah. You're going to keep moving. It's, mm-hmm. They're going to keep going on. So um, I think I love how so many of our educators have made that shift mm-hmm. from that point where now we are taking that sick leave. They are taking all six weeks of maternity or paternity leave. Um, they are getting that knee replacement surgery that's going to take X amount of whatever. Mm-hmm. Um they are using that sick leave, that vacation days, those personal days, those whatever those days are. Um, yeah. And then our baby became the first Kip baby, which I thought was cool. What you mean? Just when he would come up, when like you all would come to visit the school, everybody held him. Um. Everybody took the turns from some of the students to all of the staff. It felt like a really cool community. Um yeah, he was the very first little baby. Hmm. Yeah. Now, he's almost 19 years old. Yeah. But we still look younger, tender, huh? We do. Come on, family. <laughs> <laughs> what do you remember about that year with Jaden and baby Kip years? Hmm. I remember just trying to be... Just trying to settle in as a new mom, thinking I I I knew what it was to be a mom because I had experienced babysitting others, other children, but it was nothing like babysitting. Just trying to enjoy all of it, listening to um, others' advice, mm-hmm. um, especially about oh, enjoy it because it goes by so fast. That's the absolute truth. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you know, to be honest, I don't remember anything that you were doing at your job. Oh, because my I know. Fo- yeah. <laughs> my I, focus was on 100% our son. Yeah. So. You remember me bringing home all those crates, though? Crates of work? No? <laughs> okay. You think I'll be thinking about you? How about. <laughs> <laughs> How about the times that um, we would all be in the living room and I'd be grading papers while we'd watch Elmo's World or Adventures in Elmo Land? Look at my face. No? Okay. No. Yeah. Those years did go by very fast. Um, I do wish that we would have slowed down and taken a little time to appreciate those years more. Cause they just who's we? <laughs> you just said it yourself. You don't remember. I saw a room thinking about anything about you oh. at work. <laughs> okay. I remember my family, my little, my little baby boy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I I wasn't. I probably, in all actuality, I probably resented you. Say what? Because you were, you were into your work that much I, I i think that that was probably sure mm-hmm. like we got a whole kid here yeah so yeah. first baby lots of mistakes yeah where middle of the night baby would cry and i wouldn't even try to get up Bars. and check on baby uh and i blamed it on kip so sorry kip mr mcdaniel mm-hmm. y'all blamed it on y'all that early morning get up and had to be there and had to be on time and and 
you know, of course, any teacher, you don't want to show up when it's actually there. You want to show up 30 minutes, 45 minutes beforehand Mm -hmm. or even at the end of the school day. You don't leave when the bell leaves or when the last kid leaves. You know, the culture was a, a way of prepping for the next day and just hanging out at the school, which we did. So then you're not getting home until later that night. So um, a lot of mistakes on the first child, a lot of them. Um, but I appreciate you being patient with me. Mm-hmm. If it's one thing I'm going to be, it's patient. Yeah. And shout out to other staff members there like Belva Smith Mm -hmm. who shot straight and really gave a young kid, a young dad, some really powerful advice. Um, Others like Mr. Pete, Mrs. Pete's pastor, can't remember his name, but um, he would come to the school often and we'd all just kind of have a conversation and you could just tell that they would just kind of drop small little dimes in there. Mm. Um, Jay Lang, Wanzetta Lang, Mm. And all of the wisdom that she would give. Mm, rest uh, in peace. Even how she would say, this is how you hold a baby. <laughs> and how their old school ways of holding baby compared to what we saw in the Lamont's classes or any other classes. Um, yeah, it was, it just, it was, I remember those times. Um, and now we have a full grown kid. And we got two, two of them. them. <laughs> I think with the second baby, with our daughter, I think, weren't we pregnant with her at Kip? And then you left, maybe? Mm-hmm. Is that what happened? Yeah. Wow. So you got Us two Kip and, babies. And uh, Pete. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Both of us are, well, both of you all were pregnant at the same time. Yes. Yep. And then that baby, that was different, too. Because by that time, we understood paternity rules and maternity rules. But she was a summer baby. Mm -hmm. So that helped. And then all the mistakes that I made from baby one of having the crib on mama's side. They rolled over the baby too. I'm just playing. Yeah, they did not. (laughs) Some of the best educators in the world are people you've never heard of. They may not be on TV or get the National Teacher of the Year awards, but we want to give those teachers their flowers today. We know the sacrifice and the heavy lifting these educators go through daily. With that said, we present Sprout Outs. Hey babe, who would you like to sprout out today? Today's Sprout Out goes to those same KIPP teachers. Uh, Tracy McDaniel for just looking out for a young uh, newbie of a teacher. Mrs. Wangzetta Lang, Mrs. Belva Smith, who also were right there. And they said, hey, Dowdy, here's some things you may need to consider. Here's some other things that you can do. Uh, Warren Pete, Keisha Pete, for being like mentors for us since they had already had uh, some kids to kind of give us some grace on the way. Um, Shelly D's, Matt D's, they had babies too. And they were like, Dowdy, did you do this? Dowdy, did you? Just so many people right there. Um, even all of the teachers who kind of covered classes like an Amy Ingram or uh, like any of the other community members who would come and volunteer and teach at the class at KIPP. Um, it takes a community to raise children. And in those moments, it was just that. It was that community, whether it was uh, babysitting for the kids on a Saturday school because we had mandatory Saturday school and sometimes the baby was there with us. And Mrs. Smith or Miss Lang said, hand me that baby. And they would just go on teaching with the baby in the hand, no matter who it was. Um, Shout out to so many of the community members, uh, not only helping us raise our kid, but teaching some young parents some things on the way. Yes, thank you. Well, we've reached another ending to another episode of our podcast. Make sure to go to YouTube and like or subscribe to our channel, or you can uh, review any of our previous episodes. All right. So don't forget to join us on the next episode of See See What What Had Happened. Happened. Bye. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. You can find out more at teachbetter.com slash podcast.